Feeling great. It's been a bit of a whirlwind week after it. Definitely just getting back to reality now and trying to get back to routine. But uh, looking back on it all now, it was a crazy couple of days. Taking it all in now and yeah, getting back to normal. Myself and Kieran Clark were meant to fight as the last two fights on the prelims. We found out about half an hour before our fight time that uh, that wasn't going to happen. So they ran out of time. So they do what they call a swing bout. So they made both of us swing bouts. So which means we can be on at any stage of the night or if all else fails at the very end. I took it pretty well. Uh, so did Kieran. We just got on with it and said, look, we're here. We're on Bella tour we're in the three arena there's no point getting upset or getting too worried so we just laid back on the couches relaxed watched the fights so we went and got us some food because obviously we hadn't eaten for hours planning on fighting at seven um, and now we were going well into the night Richard Kiley walked uh, out for his fight co-main event I'm still lying back with my feet up on the leather couch having a little rest next thing I hear them calling my name and saying Danny you're on in five you're up before James literally jumped up started doing some jumping jack shadow boxing and got ready really really quick uh, five minutes later I was running down the stairs putting my runners on trying to work out which way I put the flag over my shoulders and um, really very little warm-up time no time to think no time to stress pushed out uh, onto the side of the stage and said off you go you've got to walk so um, it was crazy that ended up meaning that I was co-main event on the night mm -hmm. so 13,000 people um, just on right before James Gallagher um, and then in the fight itself I guess I'd seen the girl around the hotel uh, leading up to the fight and I thought she looked small she looked nervous and you know I really thought I had the mental edge on her but uh, when I got into the ring she looked well up for it like really gunning for me from the start put the flag on and took off um, and I didn't really think about what was happening got in there and uh, just said right here we go now uh, it's, it's time to fight I've got a job to do and I can take it all in uh, once I've done my job I got my ass whooped by a 19 year old <laughs> essentially yeah on the whole obviously it was a very disappointing night for me I really don't feel like I gave a good account of myself and you know I come in here on a daily basis and perform very well in my training and have performed very well against a lot of high level fighters in the past take note away from Norbert you know was, he did really really well I just feel like after I got caught with that first shot my reactions were a little bit all over the place and I was kind of not really at the races fully and then it was just really willpower and heart keeping me in it and look it's nice to have those things but I don't want to be the type of fighter who relies on those things you know so disappointed in the showing that I gave and disappointed in the fact that like the two big opportunities I've had so far in my career have kind of not gone very well for me um, but then I think I've beaten fighters who are better than both of the guys I've lost to so I've no doubt that I will come back from this and you know that I'll beat many more high level fighters on my journey but uh, disappointed essentially yeah. So the fight planned out exactly as we expected so we had a game plan for the last three months with um, Alan my partner and with John and that was to close the distance, shut her down, she was going to try and strike and strike fast and run and uh, that's what she did and I just kept closing the distance, uh, throwing big shots and then getting my grappling going. So after the first round you know I was chomping at the bit um, and licking on my lips really thinking I have this fight now like that was the hardest round I'm gonna have because I know she's tired now I'm not my game plan is coming together and hers is falling apart and uh, that's how it went for the next two rounds you know so obviously one of the more disappointing things is people remember your losses so much more like I think like I went 7-0 and as an amateur I won two fights on a reality series and I won my first four pro fights and yeah, that was great on the feet streak, whatever. And then you lose a fight, and all anybody will ever talk to you about is the loss. Mm -hmm. It's not like, hey, you were on some street before that. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, do you remember that? You had Rome knocked you out. Like, so, it's obviously one of the more frustrating aspects of it. But at the end of the day, if you put yourself out there as somebody who's damn good at something, hold yourself accountable to that. And, like, 
you know, if you want the plaudits, you have to be willing to take the criticism as well. And like, if I was watching that fight, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't me, I'd be criticizing the guy in there doing those motions and like getting his ass whooped like that and not defending that right hand. So in a way, it's the nature of sport, it's the nature of competition. You know, you gotta go in and fucking give it your best and take the consequences when it doesn't work out for you. And I'm much happier to be the type of person who goes in there and gives up my fucking all. And even if I come up short, I know I'll come back again the next time and fucking go again and harder. And like, that's what I've sold myself as if throughout my fucking life, you know, just like, I'm gonna give this everything I have anyway. And there's no doubt about it, like Friday night, I gave fucking everything I had. It just didn't work out for me. I will come back and I'll give more than I, you know, I'll have more to give the next time. I'll have a fucking bigger skill set. I'll have a better performance. I'll have that little bit more sharpness and I'll look for the chin a little bit more. But like, ultimately the desire is there and the desire is huge and the fucking want to, you know, get that taste out of my mouth and the want to, you know, make it a different story is huge. And, you know, generally speaking, when you really fucking want these things, you achieve them, like, you know, you find the path to go and achieve them. So I've no doubt I will find that path. Yeah, like leading up to the fight, I thought about it a good few times. How is it going to feel when I win on the night? Uh, how will I react? You know, uh, would I cry? Will, whatever, uh, what emotions will I have? Um, and I guess when it was finished, I knew, yeah, that's it. I've done my job. Um, I was really happy, but quite um, expecting to have won. I wasn't shocked at all. Um, I did what I always do in the gym every day. And uh, I was really excited then to, you know, shout out the crowd and look around me because I hadn't seen the audience at all until the fight was over. I never looked up once. So once it was over, I just like ran over to the side of the cage and tried to see if I could see my family among all the thousands of people, which was quite difficult. But um, yeah, it was elation, happiness, but also like I expected I was going to win the fight. So I'm now a pro, so I'm really happy about that. That's really cool. Um, I want to keep fighting for Bellator. They treat us amazingly, pay us really well. Um, look after us the whole fight week um, amazing production everything it's what people dream of later in their pro career and I'm getting that now so absolutely want to stay with Bellador I've got a four fight deal with them so three more fights most likely uh, they'll be in Ireland um, with Bellator in the meantime I will maybe try and get a fight somewhere else so try and get a fight between now and Christmas with a different promotion ideally I want to fight in Europe and the UK or even the US US for Bellator. The problem is, is the strawweight division, so they haven't fully developed that yet. And hopefully, in the next year or two, if that happens, I'll be able to fight four times a year. I'm sure for them. But for now, it's it's Dublin, February, Dublin, September, and uh, I'll take kind of whatever other fights I can in the meantime. Once they're happy with that arrangement. My plan for now is to be ten and two by the end of 2020. Um, and again, it like. I have a little bit of a facial fracture at the moment and I have a bit of a tear in a couple of muscles along my chest and my arm. It's it's not going to be soon, like it'll probably be January, February before I'm able to fight again. But uh, I don't see it as being any way fanciful or impossible to think that I'll fight four times next year. I know what I can do, I can beat high level fighters. So 10 and 2 by the end of the year in 2020 is the goal. And like. That's just what I'm setting out right now. Like, I'd love to get back to contention of like even getting fights with a guy like Fabian Edwards, getting the opportunity to whoop his ass. Those are things that are massively motivating to me. Look, it's about getting yourself in contention again at this stage, to me anyway, and like it's gonna take a few wins to do that. So right now, just get back on the wagon, notch up a few wins, and get back into title contender, or you know, get back into the frame of beating the best guys, like. Mm. So you say we'll see you back in the gym in a few weeks? Oh yeah, 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 don't, like, you know, look, I'm in here kicking a bag today because that's pretty much all I can do. Um, but I'd hope to be back to some bit of full training. Like, I can't get punched in the face for a good while because of the fracture, but uh, I'd definitely like to be back in training within the next two, three weeks, like, yeah, hopefully.